What's going on, family? What's going on? Um, give everybody a few minutes. Get up in here. That's my old stuff, ain't it? No, no, I don't want it. <laughs> Give everybody a few minutes to get up in here. Same routine as always. As y'all come in, give me an audio check. Let me know everything's good, and we'll go ahead and break on into it. Love the content. Keep it pushing. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, Mr. Walker. Keep on pushing, man. Got to. Okay. So, um, went on here, went live today and stuff, guys. I'm going to be home tomorrow and I'm going to be, I'm going to definitely be re- be busy for the rest of the day and stuff. So, I'm going to go on here, go live today, and then we'll go live again on um, Sunday. All right, Mr. 1111, what's going on with you? So we're going ahead and chop up some of this good game. Over here in the shop right now, getting some um, <clears throat> getting some breaks put on. What's going on? Uh, nothing, Mr. Watkins, nothing. Just going to go ahead and chop this good game up and stuff. Because tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to be busy for the rest of the day. So, got feeling me extra uncomfortable grinding to get uncomfortable. Yeah. All right. So, let's go on here to get let's go and get stuff started. Um, like I said, I don't like to get into politics very much, but politics does play into the aspect. All right, Mr. Cunningham, what's going on? Which. Uh, politics unfortunately does play a very major role in the trucking game and so uh, two days ago uh, President Donald Trump gave his address to the nation about the steps that he's going to be taking about the epidemic that's facing the country and because of his um, because of his address the next day the the stock market which was yesterday the stock market tanked horribly 2000 so because of the precautionary steps that he's taken right in order to ensure that the country stays you know gets well and doesn't fall into the coronavirus we see that there have been a lot of cancellations and stuff you know a lot of events that were supposed to happen are now not happening um, there's a travel ban up that goes into effect midnight tonight for all uh, for all European countries except for the United Kingdom. Okay, so uh, with this going on right now, and stuff. Uh, go ahead and emphasize this. Now is definitely not a time to be talking about any kind of changing. If you're thinking about um, making a jump into uh getting a truck or if you're talking about getting a truck if you're talking about switching companies anything i I urge everybody now and stuff to hold your position hold your position where you are uh at least for 30 days because i I imagine next week they're they're probably gonna be putting a lot of freezes on hiring uh some um, businesses and that stuff are just keeping on non-essential per- personnel. Uh, some of these shops that I'm going to now and stuff, you know, they're just, um, they're not operating at the capacity they're supposed to. They are, it's as, uh, you know, once the work is available, how much work they have available, they send the checks out and stuff, take care of the, take care of the job, and then they send them right home. So, um, we're starting to see these things immediately. So, 
Um, also, what we have to take into consideration is that they're doing things. We already know what they're doing on a federal level, but we got to get familiar with what they're doing on a state level. You know, we got to get familiar with what, what they're doing on a state level. So, you know, um, emerging people and stuff to get familiar with whatever's going on and stuff. You know, I'm from North Carolina, so um, Roy Cooper, that's our governor. Um, Roy Cooper, he's been putting out some things and stuff about what they're going to be doing for the state of North Carolina. Um, the state of Louisiana, the state of Louisiana and stuff, uh, they are, <clears throat> let's see, they are dismissing all educational facilities. And they're releasing all educational facilities and they're not going back in for another month. So, um, how does this tie into the trucking? You know, everybody's circumstance is different, but at the same time, you know, we have to take these things into consideration. You know, with the schoolhouses being closed down, um, <clears throat> with schoolhouses being closed down, people that have contracts, you know, to service the schools and stuff, you know, uh, food distribution places, they are now going to be cutting back on work, you see. You know, so it's no need to be taking it's no need to be taking food to colleges, schools, but not, you know, people have big contracts to do that. And so. Um, with that, contracts have also been suspended as well as the um, as well as, the, you know, some of these events and stuff, you know, these events, um, they take in, you know, large portions of money and stuff, you know, we see with the. Um, you know, with sports, I mean, I'm not really into sports and stuff, but again, because of them, um, you know, with the, the uh, NCAA, uh, the NBA, hockey, you know, those events and stuff have been canceled. And because of that, you know, big contracts, big contracts and stuff, you know, uh, alcohol, those sort of things, dance stuff, you know, um, I don't know what kind of, um, you know, a lot of these places and stuff, they pay up front, you know, for the service and stuff. And so I don't know if they will have to refund the money or however that's going to go and stuff like that. But I'm pretty sure they're going to be putting a lot of holes on funds until they get a better understanding because there's no stimulus package that's been, um, <clears throat> there's no stimulus package that's been um, talked about. You know, uh, Donald Trump did Donald Trump did mention something about it. He's talking about creating. But again, we don't know the ins and outs of what the stimulus package, um, what it consists of and stuff. And so, you know, um, some of the financial institutions, I'm, I'm starting to see now stuff uh, where they are, you know, they're setting up now stuff to where. You know, if you can't make your payments, then they're not going to be discontinuing your service and stuff. Like, again, in North Carolina, uh, lights and water, uh, lights and water. And I believe my landlord got a hold of me, too, and stuff, you know, even though I paid him already. But um, I think he's kind of worried about next month and stuff. He's saying, well, you know, if I'm a little bit late or if I can't pay. And that's cool and stuff like that. You know, it's not like any kind of papers and stuff are going to be served. So, you know, I don't know if that's going on and stuff in your area. But again, you know, they they um some of those things and stuff have been happening rather quickly. And so I don't know. You know, they're saying a month at least. They're saying a month at least and stuff. So, you know. But, um. As time, you know, as time go on, as times goes on and stuff, you know, we get a better understanding about um, what services and stuff are going to be truly affected. But you know, as of right now, you know, they're going for um, non-essential staff. Hey, what's going on, bro? All right, but um, everyone's just taking precautionary measures apart, uh, across the board. So again. Um, I can definitely see next week and stuff. They're going to be doing some. Uh, they're going to be doing some freezes on a lot of hiring. 
you know, to cut back on, you know, people gathering together and stuff like that, even though they got a limit, you know, still um, orientation and stuff like that. We know they can get some big classes, especially like with the mega carriers, you know. Um, so, again, uh, we need to take all things into consideration and say, well, how does this play into transportation? And so, again, you know, um, <clears throat> we still have a job to do. You know, we still have a job to do and stuff. But, you know, with a lot of, um, you know, with a lot of events and stuff that aren't going on, like right now, you know, with the cancellation of a lot of uh, events, you know, if you're into like moving, you know, if you if you're into like moving um, you know, stages and stuff like that, doing concert moves and stuff like um what's that company? Stage? Uh what's it, stagecoach? I forget the name of the company and stuff, but you know, that's all they do. You know, it's a, um they got another contract. They got another contract that does stuff, you know. Um some people at Landstar that do trade shows. I imagine that they're going to be affected and stuff like that. And so, you know, that pushes them in to have to move general freight. And so with the, um, with the fuel prices being where they are and stuff, which is good, it's glad that they're low, but there's going to be more, there's going to be more drivers and stuff at hand to take care of certain tasks and stuff, because what people may have contracts and stuff to do, those contracts have been suspended. And so, you know, um, in the event of something like that happen, in the event of something like that happen, which has never happened like that and stuff, at least in my years and stuff for driving trucks, I don't know what the clause is going to be as far as it pertains, as far as it pertaining to that and stuff. But you know, um, so you know, it's it's not a time to be doing a lot of uh, frivolous spending. You know, if you have any kind of um, if you have any kind of money saved up then you know if you don't have to if you don't have to spend it on non-essential things or whatever and stuff you know then don't um at least for the at least for the next 30 days at least for the next 30 days you know we see a lot of people you know a lot of toilet paper and water and stuff you know being bought up so um that's a good thing and stuff, you know, if you're in that area because they got to restock the shelves and stuff. And so, you know, but again, um, some of these companies have been staying, they've been saying like, you know, making stockpiles of things is not a good thing. You know, they, they just released it today. In fact, you know, having large amounts of toilet paper and water, uh, water really isn't going to, it really isn't going to do you any good, you know. Um, same thing with the same thing with the crude oil, you know, with the crude oil and stuff, you know, being at the price that it is, uh, you know, it's rather low right now and stuff. But again, they said this is not it's not a point where we need where people need to be buying stockpiles of it because, you know, if they know that you have it. If they know that you have it and stuff, you know, it can be something that where people aren't, you know, they, they're just not going to buy from you. And now you're just stuck with a whole, now you're just stuck with a whole bunch of stuff that you don't need. So, you know, just the essentials, that's it. Uh, but yeah, that's the R word and stuff. You know, I know we talked about this. Uh, we had talked about it earlier. Well, I talked about this stuff, you know, in the um, other videos last year. Should we invest in airlines since stocks are so low right now? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going I'm to tell you, honestly. Um, yeah, because you see, the thing is, it's not, it's something that's based upon health, right? It's something based upon health, and so... You see, once everybody has, so once everybody has, um, you know, they got the okay and stuff to go and travel and know that they don't have to worry about a sickness. Then you see 
um, you know, if you got stock in and this stuff, man, then you're going to gradually see that go up because it's not something that's economical that's causing the crash. It's a health, it's a, it's a health scare. And so, you know, once they get, you know, once they get on um, this epidemic under control and stuff, then it's going to be back to business as usual. So, you know, it's a biased market right now. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime, anytime there's a recession, anytime there's a recession or a time of recession, yes, yeah, a buyer market. But again, you got to know how to do, you got to know what to do and what to put your money in because, you know, right now, you know, if you're if you're not very knowledgeable about that and stuff, then you know now isn't the time and stuff to try to say, okay, now I'm gonna get some knowledge about it. You know, the time the time to get that and stuff was last week, the week before, you know, those times then and stuff. But um, right now, it cause you can sit there and you can put your stuff on the you can put your stuff in the wrong place and then wind up losing everything, thinking like, oh man, I'm gonna make over like a fat cat. Let's see. Talk about back taxes. Um, okay. Um, I mean, be specific when you say back taxes and stuff like, are we talking about um, what's in play right now and stuff as far as them giving extensions? As far as them giving extensions and stuff because they, they're not, they, you know, they talked about it, but I'm pretty sure it's going to get approved where, you know, April 16th is not going to be the cutoff. And so if you if you file your taxes after the 16th, then, you know, you're not going to face any kind of penalties whatsoever. If you're talking about that and stuff, you know. But um, but if you talk, let's see, three years trying to catch up. OK, yeah, well. Hey, um, the thing is, is that, you know, when it comes to your taxes, you just, you just got to stay on top of them. Let's see. Delta is selling for $33. It's usually going for about 60 but I'm not working on my credit, so I don't know if I should deactivate. Um, deviate from the plan. Um, if you got a solid inside, if you got a solid inside information, right, about uh, vacation and stuff like that, you know. If you got a solid inside and stuff, then yeah, go with that. But I mean, if it's if if it's if it's you taking a guess, then always play on the side, always play on the side of caution and stuff, and just say, well, no, you know. Um, but yeah, as far as the taxes, man, I mean, you know, uh, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people get jammed up on this stuff like that. I got jammed on it. I got jammed on this stuff. But, you know, again, when you're in a lease, when you're in a lease and you're not making any money and you sit there and you file and stuff like that, the IRS feels sorry for you. Like, man, hey, dude, what the heck? Hey, we are. Um, we owe you some money. Like, man, Jesus, how did you? How did you survive and stuff like that? Cause um, if you're looking at it from look at it from this point here and stuff like, all right, if you get if you jump into a lease and they pay you a dollar twenty five cent a mile, right? A dollar twenty five cent, and you're in a lease, and you do thirty three hundred miles a week. You do thirty three hundred miles a week. For 52 weeks, that's $171,000. Okay? That's $171,000. Um, now, um, let's see. What's the money that's in that? If you're doing $3,300 at $1.25, if somebody, somebody do the math and stuff right quick. $1.25. Um, so do 3300 and multiply that by dollar twenty-five. If somebody can give me that, then I'm gonna give you the breakdown and stuff in that, and tell you where where you stand and stuff on your taxes. Cause I ain't near the truck and stuff. I should have got a calculator. But yeah, if somebody can bring that up and stuff. I'll tell you where you stand, and then you know from there. Um, 
that's um that's thirty three hundred multiply that by a dollar twenty five cent. I know at the end of the year that gives you that gives you 171 and stuff, but the thing where, where I'm saying is that that's if you run for 52 weeks, which you know that you're not gonna do and stuff. So see the the number that gets to go, that number that goes down and stuff. Let's see. Okay, 4125. All right. So 4125, 3300. Um all right, 4125, uh, 3,300 miles of stuff a week. Okay, so um, diesel fuel is going to take that. So 3,300. So 3,300. Um, hey, Mr. Walker, do one more thing for me. Take take 3,300 and take that and divide that by 5.5. Take that and divide it by 5.5. And I'm gonna tell you how your money gonna start disappearing. So 41, 41.25 is your gross. So, um, okay, that's 600. Okay, that's, so they, so you're going to need, <laughs> okay, so that's 600, right? So you're going to need 600 gallons of fuel. You're going to need 600 gallons of fuel and stuff. So I'm doing that on a worst case scenario. Your truck might do better than that, but it's just safe to go by 5.5. If you can, do, if you can get the numbers up and stuff, then Okay. 5.5 miles to the gallon. The thing is, I'm adding all miles that you're doing that you ain't going to get paid for, which is going to bring your average down to that. So if you're doing 600, if you're doing, if you're buying fuel, you're going to need 600 gallons of stuff a week, right? So with the fuel being $2, so with the fuel being $2.80, so with the fuel being $2.80 and stuff, that was at an old average and stuff, Kai, this right here, is it going to last very much long? But, you know, overall, that's where it's been averaging and stuff. So you take that. That's the first piece of money that you're going to have to pay right off the riff. Okay? That's the first piece of money you're going to have to pay right off the riff and stuff. So we already at 41, at 600 gallons. I'm going to say 1,500. Right? I could be wrong. No, 13. 13. So you, so you subtract 13. You subtract 13 from 41. You subtract 13 from 41 and stuff, so they take care of your fuel. So now you, you got that left. So um, let's see, 13 and 41. Um, man, I can't, I can't really think straight and stuff, man. But anyhow, so you got 13 coming out. Then you got your truck. Then you got your overhead and stuff. You know, your truck, no insurance, all the other stuff there. So. That's going to take another. That's going to take a, another big piece of the pie and stuff like that. So you figure what forty. All right, so you got thirteen for the fuel. Say you got another thirteen coming out of your overhead. Okay, that's thirty six. That's so that's thirty six and stuff out of forty one. That only leaves you. Um, that only leaves you six hundred dollars. That only leaves that only leaves you six hundred dollars and stuff. And so, um, now with that six hundred dollars, you got to take care of your truck with that for fifty two weeks. Got thirteen in fuel, another thirteen in your overhead. Okay, so that's twenty eight twenty eight twenty five. But you you see what I'm saying, right? If you got another third, if you got thirteen, you take that thirteen off that twenty eight. You leave that thirteen out of that twenty eight and stuff. I mean, it doesn't leave you. It doesn't leave you much money to do anything and stuff right because what i'm saying it took care of your overhead but you still got stuff you got to take care of with your truck so by the time you push if if you able to put anything and stuff into your truck now you know you ain't got no money to pay your bills you ain't got no money to pay your bills you can't pay your taxes because you can't pay your taxes because um you already got expenses and stuff that got that money right off the gate 
see, you got to pay that diesel fuel up front. You got to pay your overhead up front. You know, they ain't going to give you all the money and say, okay, all right, now cut the check back to us. You know, they ain't doing, they getting theirs right off the gate. And then what's left over is yours. And that's what you're doing 3,300 miles and stuff a week. So this is why I tell people is that, all right, so that's what, that's what I'm telling people. All right, so you got thir- so you got 13. So you subtract another 13 from that 28. And that's what you left with. So I tell people that when you get into this and stuff, especially if you're in your lease, it's not wise to set up a portfolio because your portfolio has to be your portfolio has to be set upon when you're going out here and stuff and you got things into a position where your stuff is manageable. Your bills and stuff are manageable. They leave with 15, so I'm like, I'm pretty sure I left something out. I'm pretty sure I'm leaving something out and stuff, man. But, um, you know. But, see, I mean, again, 33, you know, I did I did it at 3,300. That's on the best, that's on the best case scenario. That's on the best case scenario, but you're not going to do 3,300 miles a week. You know what I'm saying? So, see, the number goes down and stuff. I mean, if you're able to get it, then you get it. You take your money and stuff, and then you move on to the next level if you can do it. But that's the whole that's the whole thing about not being comfortable. But that's what people do. They get into it, and they say, well, all right, well, shoot, I did all right this week. I made one good settlement. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and just throw caution to the wind. I, I don't arrive. You know, this is a good company. You know? So, um... You know, you do that and stuff, and then most of the time and stuff, you in the hole. Most of the time, you in the hole. So, all right, the, the breakdown is, okay, the breakdown is this. Um, $1.25 cent a mile, right? $1.25 cent a mile. 3,300 miles a week. 600, gallon, 600 gallons of fuel that you're going to have to pay every week for that. At two dollars and eighty cent, that will give you about thirteen hundred in fuel that you have to pay. That's right off the rip. Okay, then you got your overhead that you got to pay. So we're saying if you got forty one hundred that you have to deal with, um, thirteen. <clears throat> so thirteen out of forty one leaves you twenty eight. Okay, thirteen out of twenty one leaves you for uh, twenty eight. Okay. So your overhead is another thirteen hundred dollars. Your overhead consists of your truck payment, your insurance, um, you know, your base plate twenty two ninety, all the stuff that consisted you being in that lease, right? So we're doing that at thirty. So we're taking another thirteen hundred stuff on top of that, okay? And then what's left over? That's what you. That's what. What's left over is what you have. What you have to take care of your equipment and stuff with, and pay your bills, because. Your tax based upon your tax based upon what you bring home, okay. Your tax based upon what you bring home, and so based upon how the con based up based upon how the contract is set up, you're not really taking anything home and stuff for the first uh, two years at least. So you're always going to be able to file. You you know when you first get started, your first two years are going to be a loss, even if you're profitable or you think that you're profitable, you're not. When you think that you're profitable, you're not and stuff. Like when Woody was saying, you know, what Woody was talking about and stuff, when he bought all his trucks, when Woody bought all his trucks and stuff like that, he said that um, after everything was said and done, he had a profit of 3%, which I said was amazing. Considering the fact that he just started in his first year buying these trucks and he made uh, a 3% profit. I mean, heck, man. By the time all those feet and, and I mean, I would really have to question who, you know, who did his booking and stuff like that because it's a profit. It, it, it's a profit if you want to fool yourself into thinking that. But the reality is, is that if you had to pay, you know, the difference is you can get your stuff right off the gate, right? You're getting your truck and stuff, and they're saying, okay, you don't need the money up front, and then. Uh, we're going to consolidate your payments, right? So where you don't have to pay us all in one hit and you can still take money home and stuff too. So if you want to claim that as a profit, 
then okay. But the reality is it's not a profit because you still owe people for business. So if they just say, you know, all deals are off, we want our money now, you got to pay them. You got to pay them and stuff, and they got to get theirs first. You know, if you're a business, you got to get there. They got to get theirs first. And so you you uh, report to the IRS what you profit in. You're not profiting nothing. You're still paying taxes. and st you, You're still paying your taxes for everything that you have, but you don't have a profit. And so because you're not having a profit, they can't take they can't tax anything off that. So you begin to set up your portfolio based upon the things and stuff that you own. When you know you own the truck and you get in the truck through the bank, um, okay, yeah, that's when it's time to start selling your, your portfolio, which consists of your uh, LLC or, you know, however, however people want to do it, you know, um, however they want to do it and stuff, man, that's the thing there. Because, see, now you got to show profit because... You're in, you're in a position of ownership and stuff. You know, your contracts are pretty simple to where, you know, even though it's consolidated because you're making payments, but the thing is that you're not paying month, you're not paying, um, you're not paying weekly, you're paying monthly. And so if you got the truck through a bank, then you can't write that off. That's why a lot of people and stuff say, well, you know, hey, I'll go into a lease because at least with that, it's 100% write off, you know. It's a it's a write off and stuff like that, but you know that's, but the you know the kicker is is that because they know it's a write off and stuff like that, they tend to charge you a little bit more. So um, yeah, you know, again, just setting your portfolio up and stuff, man. You you set your portfolio up based upon the things and stuff that you own. But again, when you're in a lease, if you're starting out, you ain't got no money. And your credit and stuff is messed up, then you already know where to start. I need to start working on my credit. So I'm gonna get out here, I'm gonna grind, right? I'm gonna try to do as many miles of stuff I can do. And so what I'm gonna be putting my money into and stuff is people that can help me fix my credit. Uh helping me get financial literacy and stuff. You know, this is where you go to people like Edine Cole and stuff. You know, while you're sitting in the truck stop and you ain't doing anything and stuff, then you know. You pop in one of his seat. You pop in one of his CDs, one of his lectures. See if um, he can get you to a point where you understand the literacy of finance. You know, um, you find those and stuff, man. You know, get him, get an understanding. You know about going into stocks and stuff like that. Can you lease a truck from the deal? Yeah, absolutely. You can. Yeah, you can. You can lease a truck and stuff through. Um, you can lease a truck through the dealership and see what you do is. And this is why I tell guys and stuff that like, you know, hey, I, Prime is a good company. You know, Prime is a good company. Okay. If you want to stay at Prime and stuff, that's good. Then what you do is, is that you go, if you got, um, um, a shout out to my man, Chase and Andrew too. <laughs> okay. You got to go to Scott Daddy Jesus, right? So we use, we use his terminology. But the thing is, let's see, DC, wait till the Bertham hits. Seek auction with great mechanics. Okay. So, again, what you're doing is that you're building capital. And so when you build up the cap, once you got the capital, you know, you can you can figure out which way you want to go and stuff. Like, um, you know, you take, <laughs> okay, no Sky Daddy Jesus. All right. I mean, but see, here, here the thing, though. Everybody, even though it's, even though it's more economically sound and stuff to do that, right? Um, everybody ain't gonna be able to do like what a Chase and Andrews did because, like I said, if you look at his videos, right, Chase and Andrews was networking, and see a lot of people don't know a lot of people won't network. They won't network. You know when when he went down there to go get that flat top, he had somebody that was with him that gave him good game and stuff to told him, hey, look, you know what, hey man, uh, um, uh, yeah, this is a good truck right here and stuff. You know, I know this guy right here and stuff. He got a good truck in there. They went down there. They test drove it. You know, <laughs> they test drove it and um, all kinds of money. Yeah. But you see, the thing is, you know, with that networking and stuff that he did, right? Uh, people pointed him in the right direction and stuff. So he said, all right, well, look, uh, what do I do next and stuff with the flat top? Like, you know, somebody... 
All right, so let me turn you on to some mechanics, right? I'm going to turn you on this mechanic here. And then through networking and stuff, you know, he got everything and stuff that he needed done. So that's one way of doing it, right? The other way, um, Low Shine Parks, right? I'm going to throw him in there. Okay, Low Shine, now he says he don't want to own a truck, which, which is perfectly fine. He don't want to own a truck and stuff. He want to do... He want to get the truck and stuff. He want to drive it. And once he driving and stuff, after get after the warranty wears out, he turn it in and go get him another one. Now, this is what I'm saying to people that go and work for companies like Prime or the mega carriers and stuff, is that if that's the approach, because some people just want new truck. They just want a new truck to drive. So if you want the new truck, right, if you're working on your cap, if you're working on your capital and you're working on your credit, then when you go down there to the dealership and stuff, you know, um, if you go down there to the dealership and stuff like that, if you talk, you know, one, you know, cash is king. So you go down there, you put your payments and stuff in. You put your payments in, you get the truck. Then you keep the truck for a little while and stuff like that. As the warranty begins to wear out, then you trade it in and get you something else, right? But, you know, as long as your payments and stuff are up, you're going down there, you're putting your ear to the ground about what's going on and stuff, you know, inside the business, right? You know, and you start to build up your credit. Through your, you know, you have your capital, and then you're building up your on uh, your credit network and stuff. You may say, "Well, hey, um, I don't want to get a truck through dealership. I'm, I'm gonna go to Ryder and get a truck, right? Now, Ryder got what? They got a maintenance pro. They got a maintenance program and stuff. If you got a credit score, let's see, need loads, money for a lease with great warranty. Okay. Um, say you got a good credit. Say you got a good credit score and stuff. You know, you about seven hundred. You can go down there to ride. You can go down there to ride and, and, and lease a truck for lease a truck through them for fifteen hundred. That's maintenance free. Yeah, ride up Penske. So let's just say, hey man, I'm trying to build up a fleet, right? I'm trying to build up a fleet and stuff. So um, you got these trucks that are maintenance free. Now they got to, um, you know, you going through their program and stuff to get things done, right? You got your loads, and you ain't got to worry about getting that phone call at two o'clock in the morning. Hey, man, the truck broke down. Okay, call Ryder, call Penske. They're going to send somebody out there. They got two hours. They got two hours to take care of the issue. If they don't, they're going to bring another truck out there. Got to have an LLC or INC, no person. Okay, that's the whole thing that you work on. That's what you work on and stuff, right? You don't get comfortable. You don't get comfortable working for somebody. You know, if you if you get out your truck, and you know that them numbers and stuff ain't, them numbers on the side of your truck ain't yours. You don't need to get comfortable. I don't care. I don't care how good they pay you. I don't care how good they treat you. I don't care how many loads and stuff are consistent. I don't care how, how much your pay is consistent. You don't ever get comfortable until the names and the numbers on your truck is yours. Bottom line. So, you know. These are the things that you work on and stuff and say, well, all right, I don't want to own a truck personally, but I want to get into it. So um, you got you a brand new truck and stuff and you paying sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars a month and stuff. Right. Fair market value as opposed to paying uh, three and four thousand dollars. Three and four thousand dollars of stuff a month. You know, for the same truck. So if you want to stay, if you want to stay over there and stuff at Prime, okay, all right, uh, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna get the, you know, they got the same, they got the same lease programs and stuff um, at any dealership. Once you build your portfolio up and stuff, you say, well, look, I don't want, I don't want to uh, buy a truck. I just want to lease it for two years and stuff. Well, I got three years, so you complete that lease. Then they call, they calling you back in there. Well, hey, what you thinking about? Uh, this time, I'm gonna need about three trucks now. I'm gonna need five trucks and stuff. Okay, fine. Because you build up that business relationship, that business relationship with them, they see that you're a person in good standards. You might have opened up your account. That's what people do and stuff. And so, you know, they build their fleet that way. You know, because um, if you're going to have people working for you and stuff like that, you know, and, and I'm going to be honest, you're going to have people working for you and stuff. Everybody's not going to be knowledgeable about the truck. And even if you sit, you can't be coaching them on the phone. Uh, okay, look, you need to get this, uh, work on this, work on that. They ain't gonna know. They ain't gonna know the first thing to do. Like, hey man, uh, I just want all I do is just pick up and deliver freight and get paid on Friday. That's it. I don't know nothing about any of this stuff. You know, they ain't teach me this in school. So, 
you know, so basically having your own authority is the way to go. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, that's the, that's the best way. But I ain't saying it's the only way. But it's the best way to secure. It's the best way to secure and stuff that your business is going to be something solid. It's going to be something solid because, you know, the decisions that you make are yours. Ultimately, decisions that you make are yours. It's not going to be anybody else's input. You know, um, you don't have to worry about any kind of policy changes and stuff. You know, um, you're always going to be in the loop about anything that's going on as opposed to leasing. It has its benefits, but eventually things change in there. It doesn't matter how good of a contractor you are. It doesn't matter. Um, how good you run your business and stuff like that as far as taking care of your truck or you may have a few trucks and stuff in your fleet, that's fine, that's wonderful. Um, again, let's take Loshan Parks, for instance. This man got five trucks, right? You got five trucks and you running, and then all of a sudden, the suit and tie guys are calling you and telling you that your contract at risk because somebody else, right, on YouTube has a problem with, they have a problem with your, um, your opinion, right? We can't, we can't, um, now we talk about how we, you know, we can, um, we can speak intellectually. Let's see. What about a 10% under someone's authority? That's fine too. That's fine too. I'm going to get in that to, in, in a second. Uh, but like I said, low shine got five people, right? He got five people. Now he's working over here with this carrier and stuff. And then somebody that don't even drive a truck anymore and stuff has a problem with him and two other contractors and stuff that's in there, makes a phone call, and now the suit and tie guys and stuff are talking to you about, they're not talking about business now. They're just talking about uh, another person having a problem with you that's not even, they're, they're not even, let's see, factoring that 3%. Okay. Very, that's a very good, that's, that's a very good rate. In fact, you need to turn me on to 3% factoring. Good gracious. Cause most most factors want um I think they want eight percent if I'm not mistaken. But um, this man, that just like I said, you leased on and stuff like that, and they're calling you in. You know, you're doing a live feed and stuff, and somebody might like they might not like the way and stuff that you um you you speaking about certain su you you speaking about a certain subject. So they they talking about oh well you know what hey that right there that's a reflection. Let's see, be like, be smooth. He has his thing in order. You talking about JB Smooth? You talking about JB Smooth? Because he, um, JB Smooth, he, he okay. JB Smooth, all right. He just, it, it was some things he did. It was some things he did that, that was rather questionable. That's the thing there and stuff. I mean, you know, he, you know, he he's saying he's all right, brother, and stuff. His his situation allows him to do certain things and stuff. But you know, it, it was some things he did that was like, "Hey, man, what in the world?" Like, "Hey, dude, that's um, you know." But at least he was straight up and honest about it. That's the thing there. At least he was straight up and honest about it. But still, it's just very questionable. But yeah, having your own authority ultimately is the way to go, guys. Um, you know, you get up here on YouTube and stuff like that, and, and people are supposed to be such, they they supposed to be so intellectual and stuff, and we come together and we're talking about networking, but you say one thing that a person don't like, oh, well, you know what? Um, this person might be a Kenworth fan and stuff, and you're afraid, and you say, oh, freight liners are the best trucks in the world. Oh, okay, I'm going to tell your mom and your daddy on you. And now, you know, now your contract is being, now your contract is at risk. Not because of anything is stuff dealing with business, but just the fact, oh, well, we just seen some things on social media about you talking about freight liners being the best. You can't be saying stuff like that when it doesn't have anything to do with business. That's just my, that's just, you know, a person's opinion and stuff. And I thought we supposed to be uh, able to uh, respect everyone's opinion, even if we don't like it. But you see what I'm saying? You put in positions like that and stuff and see, that ain't cool. But when you got your own authority, it, it, hey, when you got your own authority, you can say, hey, man, you know what? Hey, these are the best trucks in the world. Who going to call you? Who going to call you in and, and have a problem with you? They ain't going to know who you got contracts with or what you got. Kind of, hey, 
they might see you with something and then they think, oh well, shoot. Okay, he got a he got a he got a contract with Walmart. Okay, but what facility? What traffic control person are you gonna call and stuff to try to disrupt that contract? See, you got your own authority, you ain't gotta worry about that. You leased on and stuff, you can't be showing what company you work with. Like, you know, even even um even the company I work for, you know. They always talk about recruiting and all that other stuff there. But then, you know, I got a contract that says that they don't want to be placed on on social media, which I say, that's cool. That's fine. It's wonderful. You know, so you got to deal with stuff like that. You know, your speeches have to be very limited to what you say and stuff, you know, because I'm going to tell you, I'm like, man, if I had my own authority, man, it'd be no holes bar. I'd probably start using profanity. (laughs) No, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. But you see, um, um, the other thing and stuff about that, that 10%, right? Yeah, if you lease on, if you lease on with somebody, look at the contracts and stuff and see what the contract state and what it covers. So if he's saying 10%, what is that 10% saying, guys? You could be paying 10%, he could be paying you 10%, but then the daggone trailer rental fee and stuff might be like seven, eight hundred dollars. It might be seven, eight hundred dollars. Your um, your insurance and stuff, your um, your cargo, your cargo liability and stuff like you might be paying another five, six hundred on top of that. You see, so see where your overheads and stuff is, and then if they're talking about a lower percentage, then if they're talking about a lower percentage see what the overhead fees are too. So that way, you know, because you might get, you might find somebody and they say, well, hey, um, we charge 20%, but that 20% make, that 20% may be all encompassing when you're going to get your own. The day I get, the day I get my own, the day I get my, um, I just need one contract. That's it. I just need one. I just need one contract. And it don't even have to be a good contract. As long as I as long as I get one, right? That's it. That's when I go get my authority. But you know, they they are very difficult to ascertain and stuff. But you know, again, you just put your ear to the ground and stuff. But if I ever get one, you know, cause I ain't I'm not gonna be out here. You can get your own authority and that's fine. But what's the point of having your own authority if you're doing loads for Landstar? Let's see, trailer $100 a week. Insurance, let's see, hold up. Let me make sure I'm reading this right. Okay, they said the trailer is $100 a week. Insurance is $560 a week. Progressive six months is free. Lease on unless they have a significant amount of freight. It's just inconsistent. One week, you're nine grand. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Because, you, you know, you got some people, man, they'll go, they'll get their own authority. They'll get their own authority and stuff, but then everything they put, oh, um, TQL load, then a C.H. Robinson load, then Coyote, then J.B. Hunt 360, you know, that sort of stuff, then everything. that See, that's your spot market right there. That's your spot market right there and stuff, you know. That's the low, that's the low hanging fruits and stuff. You see, it's it's okay if the mark it's okay if the um if the economy's doing good, kind of shoot. In 2017, all I hauled was CH Robinson lows. CH Robinson made up 80%. They made up 80% of my income. And I did real good that year. I mean, I, I I mean, I did stupid good. Like, it it, it just it, it didn't even make sense. But you know, <laughs> now you try, now you try to um, you try to get on C H Robinson low board and stuff, man. I mean, shoot, you know, you lucky to find anything up there. But I mean, it was just, I'm telling, I mean, it. it it, it, I mean, it was stupid, some of the stuff that I was doing in 2017. But, you know, 
but again, I mean, heck, you can lease on you can lease on with a carry and do CH Robinson stuff to cut down on your expenses. But I mean, you know, when you got a contract, when you got something that's in house and locked in, right? Then okay, the only thing you have to do now is stuff is just make sure you get you something back. Or you you know what? You don't even have to worry about that. As long as you service that customer and that customer is paying enough to where you can survive, you know. I ain't gonna say survive, but you know, flourish. As long as that credit and stuff straight and you get your money and stuff, man, you know, hey, you good to go. You know, they ain't up on that nonsense. But, um, yeah, just getting your own authority just to say that you got it and stuff and you a big dog, oh, well, you know, but then you doing loads for Landstar. You might just lease on the Landstar. Cause they paying you 100 okay, you got your own authority. They paying you $100 more than what they would pay their trucks. That's crazy. You might just go to Landstar. At least that way you're in there. You can use their you can use their um you can use their load board and stuff like that. Um their purchasing power and stuff like you know, their purchasing power will get uh get affiliated with a lot of their dispatches and stuff in there and then just set something up on that level. If you're gonna be doing that, you know. God, the only difference is is that you ain't gotta do the nine day inspection. You know, big whoop. Okay, ain't gotta do nine day inspection. They ain't going to be looking at my logs and stuff that hard and everything. But, you know, I mean, that's crazy. I'm like, man, no. Jack, it's about getting your kind. Get some stuff that's locked in. And I ain't talking about no stuff like, okay, I'm going to go over here to Amazon and stuff like that. No, uh -uh. ain't about that either. Amazon, that's too. Amazon and stuff. I, I look, you know, the more I look at, the more I look at, and, and I, you know, and this, this just the truth. Any contractor that I see over there. That's pulling an Amazon trailer. They are people that's just destined for failure. They destined for failure. This is the reason why the industry is what it is today. Because anytime you look at a, anytime you look at somebody who's hauling some stuff for Amazon, because Amazon has all these fulfillment centers, right? And they're not trying to give nobody a contract. Nobody. So, hey, you know, you got three trucks and stuff, then you go over here and stuff, you talk to a um, you know, you talk to an agent, you talk to an agent and stuff, explain what a contract is and how you get a contract. Okay. A contract is this what it consists of. All right, you got a truck, you got a trailer. Customers out here need a customer may decide that hey we're getting into the business of making making goods and stuff like that so they're going to have a warehouse they're going to have people to work in it but the problem is how are they going to get their goods and services transported from one place to the other so they got an option they can say hey i'm gonna go buy we're gonna go get our own truck and our own trailer but then with that comes comes with its own it comes with its own set of uh, running the business and stuff there. Okay, you got your manufacturing goods and services, but now you got a truck. So now you got to get, so now you got a truck and you got a trailer. So now you got a whole new department that you got to open up. You got to get, um, you got to get human resource people for your trucks. You got to get dispatchers for your trucks. You got to get fleet managers for your trucks. You got to get mechanic people and stuff for your trucks and your trailers, right? So you already got this one business, and now you got this other business, which is trucking, right? Then you got to go get your own authority. You got to get you got to go get your own authority because you are transporting your goods and services to another customer. It's not it's not something that's in house. It's not like I'm going from one port to an, uh, to another place. That way you can be in a no high status, like people who do NASCAR stuff like that. They are no high status. That's why they can go up and down the highway. They ain't got to go in no scale house. DOT ain't going to mess with them. None of that stuff, you know. So now you got to get your own authority. Now you got to. So you see, now you got more expenses and stuff, right? So here you are with your truck and your trailer. So what you do is you say, well, hey, let me be. Let me worry about transporting your goods and your services from one point to the next. That's my business right there. You do your business, which is manufacture your goods and your services. Let me be your primary transportation provider, okay? 
So now that that's understood and stuff there, y'all sit down and y'all y'all negotiate.